You're watching BBC Learning Zone and Real Chinese, our 10-part beginner's guide to Mandarin. Part 8 now covers all aspects of travel and transport. The real adventure of exploring China is going it alone and travelling the way the locals do. In this programme, getting around by taxi, coach and train and how to do it in Chinese. Plus a trip out to the Great Wall and beyond to the mountains, palaces and temples of Chengde. China is revolutionizing its transport infrastructure, but despite a massive road building program, Beijing still suffers traffic gridlock at peak times. Car. Buses are frequent but often crowded. Public bus. There are some 50,000 taxis in Beijing. They're cheap and easy to find. Taxi. The underground system is tiny for such a large city, but it is being expanded. Underground. Many Beijingers still travel by bike, some eight and a half million of them. Bicycle. Once they were kings of the road, now they risk their lives daily in a system that seems little short of chaos. If you want to flee the congestion and get away from the city, coaches like this are a good way to visit key sites. Bus or coach. Does this coach go to the Great Wall? Changcheng, Great Wall. I'll buy two tickets. Piao, ticket. Wang Fan Piao, a return ticket. You a return is 50 yuan. 五十, 50. To check departure time, you can ask, 什么时候开? When does it leave? 什么时候? When? 七点, 7 o'clock. 七点半, 7 o'clock. The most enduring symbol of Chinese civilization, Changcheng, the Great Wall. The wall dates back over 2,000 years but sections of it existed even before this. Linking them up into a single wall required the efforts of hundreds of thousands of forced labourers. The wall never really kept out attackers from the north, but it worked well as an elevated highway, stretching over 6,000 kilometres across the north of China. Its beacon towers were also a clever warning device, transmitting smoke signals back to Beijing when there were enemy movements. If the Great Wall symbolizes China's past, Beijing's central station is all about the present. 
For 50 years, it's been the hub of the nation's gigantic railway network. Train. Train. Train station. Times of trains and the train number are indicated on a board. It helps to know your destination in Chinese, of course. You can travel hard or soft class. Ying zuo. Hard seats. Ruan zuo. Soft seats. To be sure of getting tickets, buy them in advance. Wo yao qu cheng de. I want to go to Chengde. Yao liang zhang piao. I want two tickets. Wo yao ruan zuo. Duo shao qian yi zhang. I want soft class. How much is it each? They want to check the train's departure time. When does the train leave? Zaochen Tidian Ban. Seven thirty in the morning. Zaochen in the morning. Most of today's travelers from Beijing to Chengde are going there to work. Gung Zuo. Or as a tourist. Li Yo. Traveling by train is a great way to observe life in China's countryside. In northern China, villages have always grown corn and sorghum. Now agriculture is improving, and as well as having a more varied diet, farmers can sell their produce to the city. The train winds at a leisurely pace to reach its destination, 250 kilometers from Beijing. Chengde, a provincial town now fast developing as a tourist resort. The local government spent vast sums reviving the area's imperial history. In 1703, the Qing Emperor Kangxi began building a summer palace and hunting ground away from the heat of Beijing. The whole court would move in here for several months. The Qing dynasty were from Manchuria. And the early rulers, Emperor Kangxi and his grandson Qianlong, created a period of great stability and prosperity. In the grounds of their palace, they designed lakes and architecture to imitate the delicate forms of southern Chinese landscapes. Hills and grassland were painstakingly transformed into pleasure gardens for the royal elite. The imperial resort performed a useful diplomatic role. Leaders from nearby Mongolia and from Tibet were invited to join in splendid hunting parties in the hills. To further impress their neighbors, the Qing emperors built a number of magnificent Lama Buddhist temples in the nearby foothills, several of them modeled on Tibetan originals. The largest of the temples was designed to resemble the Potala Palace in Lhasa. Built to mark Emperor Qianlong's 60th birthday, it's adorned by the six Buddhas of infinite longevity. Like all the temples in Chengde, it's undergone costly renovation since the damage caused during the Cultural Revolution of the 1960s and 70s.
the Qing emperors built a new temple whenever there was cause for celebration. This one was built in honor of the sixth Panchen Lama when he first came to Chengde. The gilded dragons are masterpieces of decoration and weigh a ton each. All the temples are a little way out of town, but an easy ride by taxi. This visitor wants to know how much it is to go to Puning Temple. Puning Si. To address the driver, say, Shi Fu. Shi Fu, to Puning Si, how much is it? Ten yuan. Most taxis have a meter, so make sure it's on. Shi Fu, to Puning Si, how much is it? Driver, how much is it to go to Puning Temple? Ten yuan. Puning Si is a working temple with a community of 70 Lama Buddhist monks. The temple draws believers and non-believers from all corners of China. Though Buddhism is now tolerated in China, places of worship are heavily controlled by the state and valued largely for their tourist revenue. Puning Temple boasts the largest wooden Buddha in the world, towering some 22 meters high and weighing 120 tons. In Chinese, she's called Guanyin, a motherly goddess of mercy and a central deity for ordinary people. Buddhism originated in India in the 6th century BC, and despite periods of persecution, it gradually took hold in China, merging with existing beliefs to the extent that it now has a distinctly Chinese face. Most of the monks at Puning come from devout Buddhist families in Inner Mongolia. They join the order when they're teenagers. 我刚来的时候真是不喜欢，因为吃的喝的都不喜欢。但承德吃的什么都甜，我们跟老家不一样。所以说那个刚来的时候也挺想家的。嗯，我经常也想家哭啊，这个那个都挺多也有。所以说到这来也慢慢就习惯了。前几年就不不太那么习惯，现在也没事，习惯了。Being a monk here is a world apart from anything they might have imagined, and that includes performing for tourists. Every day, the monks reenact a Buddhist celebration. The ritual portrays man's quest for peace and tranquility in the face of life's perpetual struggle.